Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Johns Hopkins School of Education Special Education Virtual Webinar. My name is Tanya McMillan. I am an admissions coordinator here at the Johns Hopkins School of Education. I also have my colleague from the Office of Admissions, and she will introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sian John, Assistant Director of Admissions here at the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Welcome. Also presenting today, we have a faculty member from the Special Education Department, Dr. Alexandra Shelton. We also have a representative from Montgomery Public, Montgomery County Public Schools, Brittany Mackle, joining us today as well. Please note, today's webinar is being recorded. We will share the recorded video with you within one week. There will also be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation today as well. Please be sure to type your questions in the Q&A box and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. To begin, I'd like to share the agenda for today's virtual webinar. We will begin the presentation sharing an overview of the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Then Dr. Shelton will go over the details of the special education program at SOE. Afterwards, we will cover admissions requirements, go over financial aid and scholarship, Brittany Mackle from Montgomery County Public Schools will cover tuition reimbursement, and we will leave the floor open for questions at the end of the presentation. To begin, we here are some quick facts about SOE on this slide. We are one of nine schools at Johns Hopkins University. We began offering college courses for teachers in 1909 and then became our own school in 2007. We are proud to share that the Johns Hopkins School of Education is consistently ranked one of the top schools in education by the US News and World Report. Here you'll see some fast facts about our school. For school enrollment, we have approximately 1,741 students and offer 25 graduate programs, which include doctoral, master's, and graduate certificate programs. We also have a strong network of over 24,000 SOE alums. Here you'll see our special education faculty members, Dr. Rebecca Cruz, Dr. Tamara Martyr, and Dr. Alexandra Shelton. Presenting today, we have Dr. Shelton. Dr. Shelton joined JHU in 2021. Her research focuses on improving literacy outcomes for secondary students with mild disabilities, including mild intellectual disability and learning disabilities via intensive intervention and teacher professional development and coaching. Dr. Shelton was previously a high school special education teacher in Baltimore City Public Schools, where she served students with and without disabilities in English, language arts, reading, math, and science. At this time, I'll hand the floor over to Dr. Shelton. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Shelton. Hi, thank you all for being here. So there is a critical shortage of special education teachers in most of the United States. And because of the pandemic, we have an even greater need to have well-trained special education teachers. So it's important that states and school districts create ways to increase the number of people entering the teaching profession for special education as well as increase the diversity within special education. Next slide, please. So for that reason, we offer three pathways in the field of special education. This way you can customize your master's degree to meet your professional goals. And today we will be focusing on the mild to moderate disabilities pathway. So the mild to moderate disabilities pathway or the MMD pathway is designed for candidates who plan to serve students with mild to moderate disabilities, including emotional behavioral disabilities and learning disabilities, as well as mild intellectual disability and ADHD under the disability identification of other health impairment. But this is also a way to seek certification. And so many of our students also serve, or many of the students in our program also serve students with uh, more extensive support needs or more moderate or severe disabilities. And so the focus of this pathway is on gaining expertise and applying specialized techniques within a wide range of educational settings. And again, our program is approved by the Maryland State Department of Education for initial certification in generic special education. 
So this certification has two tracks, either elementary middle, which is grades one through eight, or secondary adult, which is grades six through 12. So the middle school years are in both uh, tracks. And so again, uh, this is a way to seek certification. However, we do have students who, are, who aim to earn their master's degree with us without seeking certification, but most of our students do attempt to do so. Okay, so here are some sample courses or really all of the courses that are in our program for um, elementary middle track. And so most of the courses are taken by all candidates. There's a total of 13 courses. Um, however, there are some classes that are track specific. So you see spoken and written language is bold. This is for elementary middle specifically. Whereas on the next slide, you will see career assessment and programming, which is for secondary adult specifically. Additionally, our program plan includes two classroom or behavior management courses and two internships. We offer classes in the summer, fall, and spring, and most of our classes, most of our classes that are in person occur in the evening at a centrally located campus, the Applied Physics Lab in Laurel, Maryland. And we also have some classes online, and most candidates take two to three years to complete the program. So um, we have seven classes that are in person and six classes that are online, which offers this hybrid approach for our students. Along with completing coursework, there are specific program requirements that students will complete as they move through the program. There are two praxis exams. There's the comprehensive exam, which students take at the midpoint of the program. There's also the culmination project and the graduate project and presentation, uh, which is optional for candidates who are seeking state certification. So we have a partnership with Montgomery County Public Schools. Um, for MCPS edu paraeducators and others who are uh, seeking certification. And so this program is called the Special Education Teacher Immersion Training or Set It program. And so cohort members complete our program in two years to earn their master's in special education with a focus on mild to moderate disabilities. But again, that is not limited. Um, and so the course of study is delivered in a prescribed series of courses that students take with the rest of their cohort. Um, and students are either on the elementary middle track or the secondary adult track. One of the benefits of uh, participating in SETIT is that students can complete their two internships in a MCPS classroom. And so SETIT is really designed for full-time school-based employees who are eligible for uh, MCPS benefits. And so um, for that reason, our students are able to complete these job embedded internships and they still have access to their salary and benefits as MCPS employees. I'm the, the School of Ed representative of SETIT or the advisor for SETIT. So I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that anyone has about what set it looks like on our end. So the ideal set it candidate is seeking initial special education certification through a state approved program, which ours is. Uh, they are planning to serve students with disabilities and they are able to commit to two years of intensive graduate coursework. They're also able to demonstrate all admissions requirements, which we'll discuss, and of course, be willing to work and study hard. All right, thank you, Dr. Shelton. So now we're gonna continue by going over the application requirements. First, a 3.0 or better cumulative undergraduate grade point average. Applicants must submit a completed application, which can be found on our school's website. The application fee is $80. Official transcripts from all post-secondary institutions that you have attended. Again, we'll need all official transcripts, including institutions you may have taken courses but did not receive a degree. An essay and a current resume. Two letters of recommendation from individuals who can speak to your work in the field of special education. 
Testing scores are required if your GPA is less than a 3.0. Please visit the Maryland Department of Education website for a listing of specific tests that are accepted. Lastly, an interview. Applicants who meet admissions requirements will be asked to interview to ensure that your goals align with the program's goals before an offer of admission. And if your degree was completed outside of the US, please keep in mind that you will need to complete a course by course evaluation. Additional information can be found on, this, on our school's website. The current tuition for SOE is for face-to-face -face courses, $918 per credit. And for online courses, $972 plus a $20 per credit technology fee. In addition, there is a registration fee for $175 per semester. And there's an application fee of $80 when you submit your application. And for additional information on tuition and fees, please visit the SOE's website. And if you're interested in applying for financial aid, we strongly encourage you to apply for financial aid when you start your application. And we do offer a limited number of partial need-based institutional scholarships each year. And these awards range on average from $500 to $1,500 per semester. And are applied to tuition expenses beginning in the fall semester. And please keep in mind to apply for the SOE endowed scholarships. Students must complete the FAFSA form. To learn if you qualify or have any questions regarding financial aid, please visit our school's website. And at this time, I will hand the floor over to Ms. Brittany Mackle from Montgomery County Public Schools, and she'll go over the details of the tuition reimbursement program. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brittany Mackle, and like you previously heard, I'm from Montgomery County Public Schools. I am the Instructional Specialist for Higher Education Partnerships. And what that means is that I am your MCPS contact in terms of the SETIT program. So when it comes to tuition reimbursement, MCPS um, reimbursement is a benefit available to eligible employees. You may think, what does that mean? How do I become an eligible? What is a benefits eligible employee? That is someone who is in a permanent position working over 20 hours or more, or in a 0.5 position or above. Because we have a special agreement with the SETIT program, Per the contract, you are only permitted nine credits of tuition reimbursement per fiscal year. With our agreement, you can exceed that amount so you can finish the program in a timely fashion. The one thing to keep in mind, however, is that because you are essentially borrowing reimbursement from future years, when you are done with the SETIT program, you may have to take a break for a year or so before you can get reimbursed again. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Thank you. So something that is very good to remember is that when you are participating in the SETIT program, reimbursement is not automated. So you do need to go through the tuition reimbursement process. Um, and there is an entire website that will explain all of that to you step by step. But just re be mindful of the fact that the onus and responsibility is on you to submit that reimbursement within 60 days of the end of the course. Um, like I said, go ahead and review the website. And the current reimbursement rate is $405.95 per graduate credit. We base this off of half of a credit at the University of Maryland College Park. So if that rate changes or if, you know, Hawkins rate changes, that will impact the exact dollar amount you may be responsible for. But as of right now, it is $405.95 per credit. And if there's any questions, you can see that the email is there for tuition reimbursement. We have the website or you can also give them a call. All right, thank you, Ms. Mackle. So now we are going to open up the floor for questions. Please type your question in the Q&A box.
And Dr. Shelton, while we wait for questions, we do have some frequently asked questions. And I noticed that some students um, joined us a little late. And so where are classes offered? Can you share the location with us, Dr. Shelton? Sure. The classes are the classes that are in person are offered at the Applied Physics Lab, which is in Maryland, meaning if you are working and living in Montgomery County, you don't have to uh, move to Baltimore or travel all the way to Baltimore for classes. Um, but our and we have some virtual classes, so it's not a completely virtual program. It's about 50 50 um, six in per six online classes, seven in person classes. And I think that answers the question, one of the questions that we have right now. Thank you, Dr. Shelton. The second question I have is, are applicants eligible for generic special education certification at the elementary middle school or is it secondary? It is up to the applicant and it, so it's up to the student. Um, Elementary middle is an option, secondary adult is an option, and those are the Maryland State Department of Education uh, terms, but essentially we have an elementary middle and a middle high option, um, meaning if you're interested in working with middle school students, you get to choose which track you'd like to follow. The next question we have is, if we join for secondary, can we do from K to 12? So if you choose um, if you choose to take the secondary track or to take the secondary route, that means that once you uh, get certified, you are certified to teach students in grades six through 12. Um, there's always the option to add a certification later, but that would be outside of the program. So within the program, you choose grades one through eight or grades six through 12. Thank you, Dr. Shelton. The next question is, can I get in the program if I don't have an undergrad degree? So this is a graduate um, special education certification program meaning you have to have your bachelor's before you are eligible for our program. And I think Brittany might have some information about ways to do that using MCPS financial support. And that's correct. And I know the um, participant who asked that question, we've already been in contact about those options, but if you would like to explore that further, just go ahead and send me an email. Thank you, Dr. Shelton and Ms. Mackle. The next question is, what is the program start date and when is the deadline for application? A really good question. So the program starts in the summer. Uh, so that is late May. So we would love for um, applications to be submitted by April 1st. And that also... Uh, gives you the opportunity to apply for funding or apply for scholarships as well, I believe. The next question we have is, if I want my track to lead to a child behavioral therapist, do any of these help? So the program supports folks who are interested in becoming teachers. So it's different from, um, so I don't think that it would help with becoming a child behavioral therapist, but we do have an applied behavior analysis or ABA program, uh, which might be more appropriate. I can add the our contact or the, the advisor for that program and you could reach out to her and she'd be able to provide you more information, but that's Dr. Tamara Martyr. Great, it looks like we have a question for Ms. Mackle. <laughs> Does MCPS pay 100% reimbursement or are there any payment pairs to pay? Okay, so MCPS does not pay 100% reimbursement for this particular program. We did do pay a good portion of it, but it's not 100%. So you will still be responsible for a portion of the tuition once we do so. Let me back up. Basically, what happens is 
you will pay, MCPS will reimburse you and give you the money back. Um, it won't be all of the money, but the credits that are eligible for reimbursement, we will give you that portion back. So you pay first and then you will get some of the money back. And Dr. Shelton, how many internships are scheduled and where do they, uh, where do students, um, where do I do my uh, internships? So there are two internships. There's the induction internship and the culmination internship, and they both take place during the second year of the program, one in the fall and one in the spring. And the benefit of being in SEDIT is that you can complete those internships at the school where you work, as long as there's alignment between uh, your track, so the grade range you've selected, and the students you have the opportunity to work with. Um, and then I did, I, there was a question that I answered by typing the answer. And I just wanted to share that any bachelor's degree is allowed or acceptable for applying. So you don't have to have a bachelor's in special education or any field of education. You just have to have a bachelor's degree. All right, so the next question we have relating to, again, tuition. If each credit is $900, then set it, we'll pay 400 of that, and we need to come up with the rest, correct? So not quite. You will receive a bill from John Hopkins for, let's just say, $900, and you will pay that bill in full. Once you have paid it, you will send that proof of payment to our tuition reimbursement office, and they will give you back any money you are eligible to receive. So again, if we're using the example of one credit being $900, you will get back $405.95. So you pay first, you get proof of that payment, and then you submit it to tuition reimbursement. They will review it, they will approve it, and then you will get that money back. Thank you, Ms. Mackle. So it looks like there are no more questions here on this slide. We have some important contact information. Please reach out to Ms. Tanya McMillan for any admissions related questions or have questions about your application. Uh, any program related questions, please reach out to Ms. Julianne Taylor and her email address is on this slide. Thank you for your interest in the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Thank you to Dr. Shelton and Ms. Mackle for the wonderful presentation. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.